What's up, guys? Happy Thursday. Um, so, Pro Tour, Rivals of Ixalan took place. I'm sure there's lots of people going, What? You're not going to be talking about Lantern Control to start things out? That won the Pro Tour. No, we're not going to talk about Lantern Control to start things out. We will talk about it at some point. I'm also going to be doing a podcast in response to, we're going to be having that episode recorded up tonight. Um, it'll be up by Saturday, where we'll have more in-depth discussion about Lantern Control. I did a little talking on some YouTube comments and stuff on my channel. Um, so if you guys really want to know like snippets before the podcast, check that out. But we're going to be talking about Mardu Pyromancer tonight. It's a sweet deck. Of course, the runner-up was, was Gary. Thompson was running this list. Uh, there was at least another one. Um, Nicholas, I can never pronounce his last name, but uh, he was going between 21 and 23 points for the modern portion of the Pro Tour. A very similar list, just slight tweaks to it, and we'll discuss why he ran the cards that he ran and why, which way works out better, you know, based on the meta and everything like that. So we'll do some more discussions of that, but Pro Tour was amazing. I think that was the big theme from everybody was modern is great. Everybody loves to watch modern. Look at these numbers. Why are we not having modern more often? Wizards, please, let's have more modern. So that was the big takeaway, it seemed. Um, excluding the very divided camp of I like Lantern and everything's fine and modern, nothing should be banned. And the opposite side of modern is so degenerate. Look at this Lantern control deck. Ban it. This deck has to go oh my god look at one clearly it's the best deck which is not the case guys it's not uh, of course there is a gp coming up we'll see more results coming up this weekend that'll give some more intake but if this is your first time tuning in welcome it is of course modern meta breakdown we did 20 some episodes for 2017 talking about the meta overall and we're jumping right into 2018 we talked about Dredge as one of the decks because you know what's popping around, especially on the SCG circuit. Um, that did put up some showings at the Pro Tour. Um, we also talked about the Jeskai control lists that are running around, kind of the more hard control, less tempo based, and that was one of the factors uh, running around the Pro Tour too. If you guys watched round one of Blue White Control versus Jeskai, what a what a game! If you want long grindy games, that's the the match for you, right? So. Um, we're going to jump in, talk about the deck, strengths, weaknesses, why you might be playing, the cards you're playing, ways to beat the deck. Okay? So simple, easy stuff that we try to go over uh, every episode of Modern Meta Breakdown. So as it stands, let's talk about the deck itself. Bum, bum, bum. So we're going to start with Nicholas's list here um, as we jump into things, right? So uh, as you guys can see, Mardu Pyromancer is the name of the game. There's 10 creatures in his list couple extra compared to Gary's list. So um, we're going to start it out with our two main creatures that are going to be seen in every uh, version of this, right? Let me just slide you over, slide you over so we can see our numbers. There we go. Okay, so Young Pyromancer is the namesake of the deck. It's 2-1 one for 2. Uh, one and a red. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one red elemental creature token. The deck is a go-wide strategy. As you might expect, the deck is full of instants and sorceries. Uh, for this particular list, um, it's running 30, right? It's it's pretty good overall. Um, so, Bedlam Reveler is also in here as a threat. It's a 3-4 you know, can be kind of scary. You look at it and you're like, 8 mana? There's no way I'm going to play an 8 mana 3-4. This seems like a horrible card. Why would you even run this in the list? Well, it actually has its cost reduced by 1 for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. And when you're running 30 instants and sorceries, it's pretty easy to cast this guy for 2 red. He also has that prowess ability, so when you're casting other ones, you can say, Okay, I'm going to cast this lightning bolt at you, right? I'll get a token, this 1-1 one, one red elemental off this young Pyromancer, and the prowess trigger, now my Bedlam Reveler becomes a 4-5, even scarier, right? Uh, but the other upside is that when Bedlam Reveler enters the battlefield, you discard your hand and draw three cards. The likelihood that you're going to have a hand above three when you're casting this, slim to none, right? Uh, this is more of a, oh, I'm down to one card, maybe two 
and I'm going to cast this Bedlam Revel. You might have a second Bedlam Revel in your hand and go, well, this kind of feels bad, but I'm running four uh, of these Bedlam Revelers because that card advantage is sweet. I really like that. Um, so that's kind of the main reason to be running this. Um, there's two other like creatures, essentially, to talk about. Uh, of course, the one that this list is running is our Goblin Rabble Master here. Uh, some older versions of this sort of Pyromancer list, the Mardu Pyromancer, ran this before. Other kind of token generator decks have run this before. I really like Goblin Rabble Master. It's a scary threat that you basically are forcing your opponents to have an answer to early on. Um, because if not, you're consistently, every turn, getting more creatures out without having to do anything. Right, just from Goblin Marvel Master sitting there, he gets guys. So cost three for a two-two. So of course that is that sort of turn three little consistency. You have to have that guy. Other goblins you control have to attack each turn if able. Beginning of your combat, you put a one-one red goblin creature token with haste onto the battlefield. So say okay, go to combat, make a one-one goblin. He has to attack this turn. Automatically swing in for one, regardless. All right. Um, then, whenever Goblin Rabble Master attacks, it gets plus one, plus O oh, until the end of the turn for each attacking Goblin. So, Rabble Master can get scary big all on his own just from being like, "All right, now look at all these Goblins I got." And I'm again, go wide is the name of the strategy for this. You try to make a bunch of guys and just swing in, turn them sideways, and say, "A couple of these guys are going to get through. A couple are going to get blocked." But I'm going to replenish my numbers easily and just keep overwhelming you with the amount of guys that I send your way. The other one, it's not a creature, but it generates creatures, right? And that is, of course, our Lingering Souls, one of the best token generators in Modern. Um, you see it across multiple lists all over the place people are running it. Even Death Shadow decks were running it there. Of course, you just have the straight-up tokens list that, that like to run it. And, of course, Mar Mardu Pyromancer is one of those token lists that loves it. You have a young Pyromancer out. You cast Lingering Souls. So I have three mana, and I get three tokens when I have a young Pyromancer, right? Two have flying, and then, of course, that one elemental. Then you have that flashback. So later on in the game, all right, we've shot here and traded resources this whole game. Oh, I have a spell that I can use in my graveyard and just make guys and have more threats, right? So it's a phenomenal card in this list. Also a way to help reduce the cost of Bedlam Reveler. So all all upside with this guy. But, you know, all weekend long, that was one of the things that these lists were doing. is saying, here's my young Pyromancer, follow it up with the Lingering Souls, enjoy my three extra creatures. And now I've got blockers to get in your way. I've got evasion with my Lingering Souls. And things are going to get scary. Because don't forget, when you flash this back, you also will get another token. So it's just like pure upside there. So I put this in with the kind of creature category uh, for the list. Because it does make sense that it just makes guys. So um, the deck for the rest of the stuff. Like we have 30 instants and sorceries. One enchantment in this list. And then that is the Blood Moon. There are some tweaks on how many numbers of Blood Moons you should run main board. How hateful do you want to be? Right? That's the real question. Uh, what's your meta like? Do you feel like you need more Blood Moons? Less Blood Moons? That sort of thing is kind of the decision making time. Um, so one Blood Moon is currently in this list. And they of course we're looking at wizards website and they like to put the most recent version of it i guess i don't you know i like the art of the card itself i like you know big fan card style that's a whole nother question so blood moons in there our instant and sorceries are set up in kind of different categories right so we have our disruption spells and we have our removal spells uh faithless looting of course is that kind of card advantage that we've got in there that's kind of our turn one play we'll be able to throw this out kind of thing draw two cards discard two cards and then you've got that flashback again extra card advantage later on generates token of young pyromancer like all upside also reduces the cost of bedlam reveler so great in this list there's four in here so we'll talk about our disruption first that goes along with all these great cards uh play set of inquisition of course, everybody should remember this guy. Target player reveals their hand. You get a card that costs three or less. That player will have to discard that. So, works out well. Three thought sees are in this list as well. Basically saying, I can take anything that's a non-land card and get rid of it. But I have to lose two life in order to do that. So, 
oh well, a little downside. Um, so there's our, of course, sorcery that's disruption related. Colgan's command is that double duty action of saying, hey, I can do so much, right? I've got all of the action I can do. I can sit here and be able to make you discard a card. So there's that disruption. I can be able to burn you out and do two damage to a creature or a player. Or I can destroy one of your artifacts. I can also return a creature from my graveyard to my hand. So that young pyromancer you killed early, that goblin ravel master, that bedlam reveler, that's coming back to my hand. And reveler is a great one to return because you can say, hey, the cost of it is reduced. I'm just going to pay two and replenish my hand, all right? It's, so I really like that. You see three in this list. That seems like a great number. Um, other removal spells that we've got. So going over the sorceries one more time for the two that are in here. Um, Fork Bolt is one of them. That's just kind of, I can ping off things, deal two damage, divide as you choose among one or two target creatures or players. So if you're playing against another token-based strategy, you can start pinging things off. Playing against, you know, some Planeswalkers, you can start pinging things off. So it's just an extra removal spell. I, you know, it's, it's fine, right? Two damage is all right. The real reason people are running it, um, is because of that flexibility to target multiple things. It works out, fills in the slot just fine when you need more kind of burn stuff, uh, and you're not so relying on that just single targeted things. The big reason be by running the fork bolt in this is because you want to be able to cast something low cost and be able to make guys with it, right? Young Pyromancer, like you play Young My Pyromancer on turn three, you can be able to follow it up with a Fork Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Faithless Looting, something that costs one, so you automatically get a guy off it. So that's that's a big draw to running the Fork Bolt. The other one, Dread Boar. I love, love, love Dread Boar. Um, you know, you do have the way to go wide and try to deal with Planeswalkers, but this just gives you some extra insurance, right? Especially against something like a Tronless that likes to run Ugin and just get rid of all your tokens. So this just helps out a lot more in, in matches like that, that you just need that extra help. So I'm a big fan of at least keeping one in that list. Uh, the instances that we'd expect, there's a play set of bolts in here. Um, we've also got two helixes because it is Mardu. You are all three colors there, red, white, and black. You know, as we've seen, helix, deal three damage, gain three life. That life gain is important. Uh, in Gary's interview that he was talking about, there was a lot of matches that he was in that 1-2 life at the end and was able to just kind of snowball advantages. And, you know, after trading all these resources, we've done all these, you know, spells back and forth. We've done all this disruption. We've done all this. But I just have more guys now after doing all this stuff, right? And I'm able to come back and win it. Uh, the other one we've got is our Burst Lightning. Very similar to kind of Fork Bolt, or is it only does two damage at the start. If you want, you can kick it later on, and it deals four damage to target player um, or creature. So you can do that sort of, oh, I've got a bunch of mana and drew this. Well, I guess I'll do two damage. Nope, you can actually sit there and pay five mana and deal four damage instead. So that's just a nice, again, I want to have a young Pyromancer. I want to make guys, as many of those one-drop effective cards as possible, help. Uh, Terminate's also in here is just extra creature removal. And when you're... Going into a format where five color humans was an extremely popular list, having extra removal spells is great. And that's where also the Fort Bolts and the Burst Lightning help too, because some of those creatures do have two toughness before things start getting uh, a little out of hand. A lot of the creatures that you want to be killing off, especially early on, um, will have that two toughness. Terminate for everything else, right? Um, so that's kind of our list of the spells we've got. Lands, only 19, as you kind of see here. Uh, we've got, of course, our Fetch Lands, Bloodstained Mire, Wooded Foothills. Um, and then we are getting into, oh, there's well, that single Marsh Flats. Can't forget about that guy. Uh, then we've got into our kind of Fast Land, Black Leaf Cliffs, whole four of them in there. Got to have that play set. Only uh, three Shock Lands and then four Basics. So one Blood Crypt, two Sacred Foundry, double Mountain, double Swamp. You know, got to have those good stuff. Uh, sideboard gets a little bit more controlly. Two more Blood Moons. Um, so I love this as kind of an extra card against um, the mirror matchup, right? Against token strategies. Um, also can be able to do against like a control-based deck. As you say, hey, you're casting all these non-creature spells. 
you're going to lose two life and I'll gain two life every time. Uh, again, more removal. Fatal pushes in here too. Two wear and tear. One Dragon's Claw uh, against the burn matchup. Just kind of a way to help stay alive. Four Leyline of the Void. This is kind of Nicholas saying, hey, Dread's a thing. All right. This, that's going to be scary to deal with. Maybe there's some other strategies running around I want to just kind of shut down. Right? If you're playing against that Delirium Death Shadow, this is also a nice kind of bonus if you'd like. Um, Shattering Spree, again, more artifact removal and double Pithing Needle in here. So overall, really nice go about strategy for it, but it is not um, as controlly as Gary's list was. So we're going to hop over and talk about that one uh, next. So bam, here's his list, and of course we've got Liliana of the Veil as as our big um, control style of things. Oops, I'm losing my stuff. Um, so Liliana, I l absolutely love Lily. Uh, been playing a, a red black deck lately, and just been really enjoying um, having her in there to be able to um, get people and you know take that cards away from them, be able to uh, make them sack a creature and stuff like that. Oh, we're not even looking at Lily. What am I doing, guys? Um, so Liliana is in here. One main board. Um, there's also one in the sideboard. So again, you, Gary kind of going for more of that, I want to be a little more controly here, instead of more aggressive with having less creatures, right? It's only eight this time. Um, so trying things a little bit differently to be able to have, um, you know, more extra stuff by having the lily having an extra blood moon in there and increase the number of lands compared to the last list uh that we looked at so um really happy that uh, he opted for this style of play but you can see that again spells are looking very similar they're you know still the same sort of strategy i need that young pyromancer um i need that bedlam reveler as my main creatures i'm going to draw spells i'm going to make a bunch of guys and our spells are very close Right? There is a couple differences um, between the lists that we, we do see here. And let me just check. Here we go. Let's add Lily into our pile here because Lily's important. So a couple differences here. Like, of course, it's got the four Faithless Looting. We've got that Dreadboard we talked about. Lingering Souls, Inquisition Thought Seize, Collector Brutality, amazing card. Um, help discard stuff for advantage to you can be able to use Bedlam Reveler more effectively. Um, get more stuff into your graveyard that you might not need. You can also say, you know what? I'm a little slow on lands. I'm having a hard time uh, getting things going. I don't have a white source right now, right? I've got my Blood Moon out, so I'm going to use this Collective Brutality and discard this Lingering Souls to get this extra Escalated ability off of it, and then I'll be able to cast my Lingering Souls next turn, right? So you have those ways of doing things. Um, so I like the, you know, double collective in here, especially when you're running two blood moon main, uh, four bolts, four put or two push, one terminate, one mana morphos, three call guns. So a lot less of those one cost spells, right? Um, like the fork bolts and things like that aren't in here because he's fine going a little bit longer in the game. He says, you know what? I'd rather be more controlly than just quicker with the, the board, right? I don't need to be on the board as aggressively as some of the other strategies. Manamorphose, amazing card here. And again, like if you have your Blood Moon out and you need a way to get double black, you don't have both your swamps or something, um, you don't have access to uh, white or, or a way to discard your Lingering Souls, Manamorphose can help you kind of fix your mana a little bit because it's castable when you have Blood Moon um, because it is that split. And you get to draw a card. So again, that card advantage, something that a lot of red um, black decks or Mardu decks are lacking. That's why the Bedlam Reveler, Faithless Looting are really important um, ways to help keep yourself in the game later on as things have been progressing and you've used a lot of your resources. Uh, the Manamorphose is a nice touch, just kind of a little help with the fixing um, essentially there. And, you know, one Terminate, more Fatal Push. Again, that same sort of reasoning behind it is like, the more one cost stuff helps out and a lot of the stuff gets hit um, with fatal push so having the extra terminate might not be as necessary there but two blood moon main again we talked about the lands four black leaf kiff two swamps three mountain sacred foundries in there two blood crypt bloodstained myers in here and four marsh flat so we're opting for additional fetches in here a little bit tweaking 
with our basics as well. Just an increase in numbers, right? So more brutality in the sideboard. Two extras in here. Uh, again, all the modes on here are super important, super relevant. Just like we were talking about with Colgan's Command, about every single mode matters. The same thing for Collective Brutality, right? Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose an instant sorcery card from it. That player discards it. Uh, you can neg two, neg two a creature until the end of turn. Target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So you're saying, yeah, I'm fine with using any of these modes here. Um, again, we talked about the extra Lily in there. It's pretty sweet. Some uh, extra hate against lands. Ghost Quarter to Molten Reigns. This is basically kind of having his ear to the ground, paying attention, doing that extra testing. And well, Tron's powerful. Yeah, yeah, Tron's out there. What, what is the ways that I can deal with some Tron? Well, I've got two Molten Reigns. I've got a Ghost Quarter. I've got a Fulminator Mage in here. Oh, and three Surgical, so I can keep you off of Tron forever. So I love it. Uh, the sort of extra graveyard hate. Surgical Extraction is a phenomenal card, especially when you get extra value when you have Young Pyromancer and you say, okay, I'm going to pay no mana. I'm going to pay two life. Get rid of four cards from your deck. Graveyard, hand, library, whichever, you know, where they might be, those are going away, right? And I'm just going to make a guy off that because I've got Young Pyromancer there. Graveyard Hate, we've got is the Nihil Spell Bomb. Also a way to draw a card. That card advantage we talked about, really important. Uh, two Wear and Tear is here. Destroy Target Artifact. Destroy Target Enchantment. Whatever you kind of want to do. Um, then Anger of the Gods. That Singleton in here as a way to deal with a mirror matchup, potentially. As a way to help against humans. You know, you've got a lot of single targeted stuff. But against another go wide strategy, Anger of the Gods is important. And that's another way to deal with this deck, right? Is they're all about having that young Pyromancer out, playing Lingering Souls, just making a lot of guys. And a lot of their guys don't do a lot of damage, right? The Red Elementals are 1 1s, the White Spirits are 1 1s. You're not going to be sitting there and be like, ah, here's 10 points of damage in one turn. No, it's that's very very rare to happen right it's it's more of incremental just chip away at you slowly build up and then you're gonna have those big swings where it's like well i'm coming at you now that i've built up a big board i'm coming at you with eight nine ten power they're all a bunch of one ones so you can easily start trading off and killing them but there's there's a lot of them so um i like the that's the best way to tackle these sort of decks is those angers uh, you can also go for that disruption as well if you can strip away their bedlam revelers things like that or their young pyromancer they're just a deck full of spells uh, and if they have no way to pay out it's going to be relying mainly on lingering souls and that's where you can kind of take advantage of it you have to be careful though if you're a three color deck that blood moon will definitely hurt you um so they're fine with playing it. Like Gary's list had two. The previous list that we were looking at had one main and two in the side. So uh, really unique style of deck. All about that go wide. Make a lot of guys. Take advantage of these low cost spells to just generate extra threats. Um, ways to kind of stay that sort of long term action with it. They've got ways to kind of stick it out with with Collective Brutality to gain some life. Some lists are running Helix. Gary was not on the Helix plan. He liked the Brutality more, liked the sort of uh, more control -y route. I, I think if you're going to play this list, it's a strong list. It's very meta dependent on what your meta is looking like. A lot of it too is you might fall on your face a couple of times. And, and I think a big reason why Gary did so well is his was a little more controlly, and it was Gary playing the deck, right? It's not so much of just any rando person picked it up and we're like, hey, we're going to do great with this. Because he kept talking about how he'd sit there at like one life, right? And he'd be going, well, I'm, I'm hoping that I can make this work, right? I'm hoping that I can get there or sitting at two life and get down real low in some of his matches and, and he's able to kind of stick it out and, and make it work. So... Um, if you want to really get good with the deck, play with it. Don't get too frustrated. Do your tweaks. Make it your own, too. Because uh, you can see against the two lists, they are similar, but they're not the same thing. So, really interesting list uh, going forward. Just wanted to highlight at least those two for you guys. Oh, there we go. Bam, I'm back. So, did want to highlight those two for you guys since they were a really interesting list. 
like that sort of style of making tokens, tokens is a fun strategy to play, right? Um, so if you like the Mardu colors, those are your sort of style. If you like having some hateful cards like Blood Moon, that's another great way to go about it, and you have ways to kind of do it other than just a prison-based deck, like the, the red-white prison-based deck. So um, powerful, especially if you have a lot of Tron and stuff like that running around your meta. Pick up this for a little bit and, and let me know how you, you enjoy it. But um, that's going to be it for this episode of Modern Meta Breakdown. If you guys like what you see, hit the subscribe, hit the follows. Make sure you're heading over to twitch.tv and youtube.com slash Modern Magic Mondays. Every Monday, we have at least five rounds of coverage um, that, of course, myself and Farmers R&R are going to be doing all of that, commentating about the matches. We've been having some really sweet decks show up on camera. We had, of course, our Top 8 Invitational. All those VODs are up on YouTube now, so you guys can be able to check that out. Going to be a lot more content kind of flooding your way, like I said, in response to our podcast is going to be coming up on Saturday. We're going to be going full breakdowns about the Pro Tour because I loved watching it, and I can't wait to discuss it more um, and get your guys' feedback and ideas of what you thought about the Pro Tour. But that's going to do it here tonight, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching, and I'll see you guys next game.